Okay, today I'm going to show you guys how to properly install an inline fuse holder. Um, this is going to be a kind of a multi-purpose video. Since in the last one I showed you how the ter ring terminals basically pulled right off of the new PowerBright cables, I'm going to show you how to properly crimp and how to solder those on there um, and how to install your fuse holder. Okay, so let me show you what you're going to need for this project. Here's my PowerBright 2300 watt power inverter. You're going to need a razor blade, a sharp one preferably, so you can strip the insulation off of your cables. You're going to need some heavy duty cable cutters, depending on what size you're working with. I'm working with one aught, so you need to make sure your cable cutters are large enough for that job. A set of crimpers. I'm going to be installing a 200 amp inline fuse holder for this job. So there's my fuse holder and the fuse right there. These are the old ring terminals that I had shown in the last video that just pulled right off of there. So I'm going to go ahead and replace those. You can see terrible crimp job and there's no solder on them. So that's what you get. They just end up falling off there. Here's the new ring terminal ends, ring terminals. You're going to need to know what size you need, and that's dependent on what size cable you have. This is just a variation of them, a different variety of them. You're going to need some flux, some solder, and obviously your cables. And the one last thing, actually a couple more things, you're going to need some shrink tubing that you're going to place over the top of it after you get it all soldered and crimped, and you're going to need a heat torch. So those are the items that you're going to need to complete the job, so let's go ahead and show you how we do it. Okay, so how this stuff came, these were six uh, foot sections of one aught cable that I ordered off of Amazon. Since we're going to be installing the inline fuse holder, which is this right here, we're going to install it on the, the red or the positive side. I went ahead and cut the, the red cable. If you're using just standard black like um, golf cart cables or battery cable, it doesn't matter as long as obviously one is designated positive, that's going to be your positive side on your battery. So I went ahead and cut it. I cut it to a one foot section leaving five feet hanging off the other end. I've already done other um, connections on the other ends. So you're going to take your, uh, well first you'll take your cable cutters, make a nice clean cut in the cable. You're going to take your razor, cut off the insulation. This is going to depend on what size cable you're using and what your ring terminals um, look like. The easiest way to do it is just go ahead and take a ring terminal, put it on there. You'll want a little tiny bit sticking out towards the ring end. Stick it on there. You'll just hang it over, make a little mark, and then that's when you'll take your cut your razor and make a cut all the way around. You don't want to go too deep because you don't want to start cutting into your um, your wire inside of there. After you get that done, go ahead and take some flux. Get that on there. This flux is really going to help keep all, especially if you're using these power bright cables, these wires are so fine. If you're using like battery cable, um, battery cable or like golf cart cable, the stuff doesn't seem to be so fine. It's a little bit more manageable. On um, these power bright cables, it's such tiny wires that they just want to kind of fray all over the place. Then you're going to go ahead and take your um, heat shrink, your heat tubing, slide it over. Where did I just put that? There we go. All right, go ahead and take your ring terminal. Carefully put it over the wires, making sure that you don't bend any out of there. There you go. So not sure if you can see that. It's just sticking out maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, which is fine. Take your crimpers.
and you want to make sure you push them all the way down. Don't stop when it gets tight. Get it all the way closed. So you can see that's a nice tight crimp on there. There's no way that's coming out. So, and to, just to be sure, we're going to go ahead and throw some solder down in there. So get a little bit of your, your solder fed out like that. So once it starts feeding, once you get the, the ring terminal end hot enough, it should feed right down into there. It just feeds right down in there. You want to be careful not to get too much heat near your insulation, otherwise you'll start to melt that. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and let that cool. Twist this one out of the way. Alright, so here's uh, one I did moments ago. It's already cooled. It's very, very tight on there. There's no way this thing's coming off. So we're going to go ahead and install our heat tubing. We want to get it lined up. I bought this stuff here at Home Depot. You can get different lengths of it. To me, it works about perfect. Um, divide, they have a two pack there, and then I just cut it in half. It gives me more coverage than I need, and it hardly costs anything, so I get it all the way up there and uh, shrink it all the way down. There you go. Doesn't take much heat, gets it nice and uh, nice and tight on there. So that's what a completed one looks like right there. All right. So we'll, we'll go ahead and let this cool and then I'll be back and show you how I assemble it all. Okay, so what I've went ahead and done is attach the small piece of the red cable, the one that's gonna go onto your positive terminal. I've went ahead and attached that to the power inverter. Go ahead and take your inline fuse holder. How this works is you put the fuse in like that and then it swings in. At least on this one you'll have a washer down below the fuse and then you can go ahead and put your one ring terminal on top like that. Put your washer, standard washer on, lock washer and then your nut. And then it's going to continue on out this side, come out over here. I'll put the lock wash on after. All right, so you get that all tightened down. And then you'll put your cap for your for your fuse holder on. One thing I didn't mention is when you're deciding which ring terminals to use, you want to make sure that once it's crimped, it's going to fit through here. It's kind of a narrow spot for using one odd gauge um, cable. So like these, for instance which I used on the other side. They're heavier, they're more heavy duty, but once I got it crimped, there was no way it was gonna fit in there. So you could have ground it down or something like that, but it's easier if you just use the right size ring terminal. So this other end will hook up to your battery, of your vehicle or a spare battery, whatever you're running it off of. And then you'll hook up your black wire to your negative side of your power inverter, and that'll continue on to the negative side of your battery. So that's it. So I'll make another follow-up video letting you guys know how this Power Bright inverter works and uh, showing you guys how, how it's working and what it's uh, running. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching.